Hello, everyone, and welcome back to yet another cracking edition of the Matt Brown Show. This is the Secrets of Fail series where we're talking to CEOs and entrepreneurs all about their epic business blenders. And with us uh, in the hot seat today uh, is the founder and CEO of JustAnswer.com, Andy Kurtzig. Andy, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Matt. Happy to be here. Yeah, cool, man. Well, you know what's coming. So let's uh, kick us off with uh, the elevator pitch. What are you guys up to there at Just Answer? So Just Answer connects consumers with experts online 24-7. So if you want to talk to a doctor or a lawyer or a mechanic or accountant, any kind of professional online, real-time, Just Answer is the place to go. That's so cool. Um, so, I mean, who's your customer typically? Is it all business owners or something like that? Or? It's both. It's sort of, it's it's a lot of consumers and small businesses. So it's, it's you know, it's sort of the bottom 99%. So the, the top 1% is paying 500 bucks an hour to a lawyer and doing it the, the old way, but but all those that, that don't want to pay anywhere near that much and wants to get just, just as good a quality help comes to us. That's so cool. And you guys have been around for 19 years, you said, hey? 19 and a half years coming up on my 20-year anniversary. Wow, that's crazy. How do you feel when you think about that? It's a long time. It turned out it was a little harder than I thought it was going to be when I started. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, look, um, we'd love to get more into all of that, but uh, we don't have time for that because uh, we've got to get into the meat and potatoes of this episode. So Andy, what is your epic story of fail for our audience around the world today? Well, so our biggest failure was 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 uh, when we tried to do a rebrand. So we tried to change our name from justanswer.com to pearl.com. You can already tell where this is ending up because it, Pearl did not stick. It's a great name. Uh, short, memorable pearl of wisdom. And so we just decided we wanted to, to we like the name so much that we were going to do a rebrand. And, and, you know, while you're doing a rebrand, why not rewrite all the code at the same time on, and, and <laughs> redo the, the whole UX at the same time and sort of, you might as well, you're already in there. And so we just took on a very big project and uh, it did not work. <laughs> <laughs> that's an epic undertaking so yeah. when when did this happen was this uh like 10 years in like when did yeah. it's about 10 years about in about 10 years in wow yeah that's so crazy yeah. um yeah. and so obviously it didn't work out but what did that whole experience teach you like uh it's a failure of a rebrand and so forth but you know what what lesson do you take forward with you in your business today yeah so so you know, the name is a cool name, Pearl.com. It's a great name. We paid a lot of money for that domain name. And, and uh, we talked to our, our employees, great name. We talked to, uh, we hired a naming company. They said, great name. We, we talked to our experts, great name. Um, yeah, we talked to our board, great name. Everybody thought it was a great name. And, and so we did it. You notice I forgot to mention one constituent in that list. Mm -hmm. Our customer. We forgot to really talk to our customer and figure out: Do you like this name? Does this work for you? Would you buy professional services from a from a name like this? And and sort of two years in of just sort of all out going for it on trying to make this work, uh, we realized no customers didn't really know what a Pearl dot com was. They knew what a Just Answer was. It's going to answer my question, and so we had to 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 undo it all. And what we did actually we ran a test. We ran a test to see, okay, just answer.com versus pearl.com. Everything the same except for the brand name and the logo. Which would do better? Just answer did way better. That was that was the uh, the end of that. But it was painful, expensive, and you know, very, very hard lesson. Hmm. What did you what do you think if you were to well when you think back on that and you if you were to put a number approximately, what did you what do you think this failed rebrand would have cost you? Uh, definitely, definitely in the tens of millions of dollars. Um, yeah, this is not a cheap mistake. It was, it was money and time. And I mean, we were burning cash uh, while we were trying to do this rebrand. We had two teams. We had the, the Pearl team, which was the new team. And everybody was kind of geared up to move over to this team. And then we had this sort of small little, team that was still kind of managing just answer just until we were ready to move everybody over and uh so we were kind of running two teams so it doubled the costs for a long time and that that, that really added up and it was distracting and everything else that, that, that you can imagine mm, i'm sure so andy 
could get into the Matt Brown show time machine and knowing what you know now, hindsight being a perfect science and kind of go back to yourself 10 years ago and go, listen, yeah, <laughs> here's a piece of advice about this whole thing. Uh, what advice would you give yourself, you know, if you had the luxury to do so? Well, if, if I only had uh, three words, I'd say don't do it. But, <laughs> but uh, I think the, the, the more interesting answer is start with the customer. You know, we, we, you know, we're such a customer-driven company. We had been, we'd grown up that way to start with a customer. Everything we do, test and learn. What does the customer actually want? And I think on this decision, we just felt like, you know, yeah, this time we're not going to do that. We're going to be big and bold and go do some awesome thing. And we thought we were somehow above starting with our customer for some period of time. We just raised a bunch of money. So we had a lot of money and burning a hole in our pocket and we thought hey let's do something big and bold with this money and, and i wish we just started with the customer we could still have the same idea hey customers what do you think of this save does that work for you and we would have found out much quicker much cheaper and would have, would have been able to spend all that money on something that's useful for the customer instead yeah for sure so uh, andy what is your advice to ceos and ceos rather and entrepreneurs out there in terms of you know the importance of failing or failure in becoming uh, successful well you know, it's the same thing i tell my kids when we go skiing if you're not falling you're not trying hard enough so you gotta take risks you gotta innovate you gotta take chances and if you're never failing it means you're not taking enough risk you're not taking enough chances so you know i think that's lesson number one but of course the the, the big overarching lesson is when you're taking chances do things that are serving a customer need that's the most important thing mm. right Absolutely. Andy, you've been around the block. Um, you've obviously consumed a, 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 a lot of resources and tools and books and things like that. Is there a, a book or a tool or resource that comes to mind that you recommend to other CEOs out there? Yeah, my favorite book of all time is The Lean Startup by Eric Reese. We were doing that before that book came out. We just didn't have a name for it. As soon as that book came out, it's, oh, this is our Bible. We get it. And, uh, and just, it's, you know, the big lesson there is the same as I was just saying, which is start with the customer. All that other stuff doesn't matter. If the customer doesn't want it, it's not worth doing. Yeah. How much do you, just a side note, I was having lunch with my wife a minute ago, and I was saying, like, focusing on your competitors is a complete waste of time, especially when you're a startup, because I agree with what you're saying in that, you know, uh, you should be focusing on your customer because that's how you win. It's like you understand yeah. the customer better than your competition. Does fuck what you know, whatever else they're doing and how they price doesn't matter. You know, it that's doesn't right. change the fundamentals of what you're building. Do you, what do you agree with? I agree with that. You know, so competitors, you can look at them to get ideas. Certainly, you can look at other industries and get ideas. You can get ideas all over the place, but at the end of the day, those ideas, wherever they come from, are are not worth anything unless. It's valuable to the customer. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And your particular customer. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, Andy, uh, any entrepreneur that I meet with a two decade old uh, business needs a, a, a big hug. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, and uh, seriously, congrats, dude. I think, you know, we're chatting before we went live. I just think that, you know, uh, just to hang on to, uh, to be able to weather like, you know, 2008 you know, COVID and all these things. It's like, and, you know, probably gone through three recessions, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And um, and the, even like the dot-com boom is kind of like just around there too. So the fact that you've been able to weather all these storms and, and you still got an incredible business is, uh, you know, it's kudos to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Awesome. Well, look, Andy, thanks for being in the hot seat. That concludes your time. Everybody else, we'll see you all again soon.